Welcome to the do-it-yourself home energy audit. This video is designed to help you look around your home for any potential problems and to help you save money on your energy bills. Let's start here. If at some point you experience a dramatic increase between one month's electric bill and the next, don't immediately blame it on the meter. Most likely the meter is not the cause of a high bill. More than likely, the source of that problem can be traced to the ductwork, heating and cooling system, or the water heater. We're going to cover some of the big ticket items that might cost you more up front, but you'll have more potential savings in the long run. And along the way, we'll point out some simple steps that you can take to help maintain your home and make it run more efficiently. Many of the tips we'll offer are simple lifestyle changes or do-it-yourself projects that any homeowner or renter can tackle. Other projects suggested, like adding additional insulation or caulking, are tasks most people who are handy around the house can do. But you'll want to leave things like servicing your cooling system or changing a water heater element to a professional. These tips will make your home healthier, more comfortable, and possibly make you eligible for your EMC's lowest residential rate. Let's get started. I'm here with Bruce, and I understand that heating and cooling make up most of my energy bill cost. That's correct. Uh, by maintaining your system, making sure it works efficiently, then I'll give you the most savings on your heating and cooling bill. Now, the way this system works, this is the indoor unit, and all the air from the house has to come to this point and then be redelivered. So it's very important that this airflow is sealed and that it's continuous. And there's several things you can do to make sure that there's proper airflow. The easiest one is to make sure that the filter is changed and replaced monthly. You remove the access panel and pull out the filter. Now in this case, this one's extremely dirty and needs to be replaced. Replace it monthly. In your case, you may have a permanent filter. That filter needs to be washed out and then can be reused. The other thing you want to look at is to make sure you're not pulling air from places you don't want it to come from. For example, this unit's in the basement. There's holes and openings here in front of the unit where the refrigerant lines go in and that's pulling air from the basement into the unit. We don't want that air into the unit. We want only air from the house to come to the unit and then be returned to the unit. It's important too that extra heat is not lost or picked up by the air duct system. This duct is insulated and sealed properly. It should be sealed with a material called mastic, which is an adhesive putty that makes airtight connections on all the ducts. Where the ducts come together, is where the areas, most of that leakage occurs. Bruce, what else can the homeowner do to save money on their heating and cooling bill? There are actually many things you can do. Ceiling fans, for example. A ceiling fan will make you feel two to three degrees cooler than without the fan. By operating the fan, you can actually raise your thermostat level. That makes the air conditioner run less often. Another thing is the windows. Make sure on sunny days, particularly on the east and west facing windows, that you have the blinds closed. That not only blocks out the heat, but also reduces heat transfer out of the, the glass windows. Other things is that airflow we talked about earlier. Make sure any vents that you have in the floor are not blocked by furniture and they're not blocked by rugs or other items. Other things is dress appropriately for the season. Summertime, wear light, loose-fitting clothing. Wintertime, make sure you wear, wear warm, thick clothing. Also, heat-producing appliances in the summer. Try to avoid using them during the hottest part of the day. And your thermostat, for example. You can install what's called a programmable thermostat. Programmable thermostats have a built-in timer that allow you to automatically change the temperature when you're away from home or during the winter months at night while you're sleeping. This can save anywhere from 8 to 10 percent off your heating cooling bill. Bruce, are there any suggestions for the outside unit? Let's go outside and take a look. So we're outside the house and you can see this home has two units. That's right. This is a two-story house, so there's a unit for the downstairs and a unit for the upstairs. This unit, it's important to have proper airflow moving across this heat exchanging coil. 
and so this is an ideal location. Once this area is mowed, grass clippings can be pulled into the unit, insulating this coil, making it use more energy. So it's important to keep this area clean and this coil clean. This is the condensation drain line. Your air conditioner does two important jobs. It lowers air temperature and also extracts moisture out of the air. That extracted moisture is discharged from here in, the, in water. If you don't see water coming out of this line when the air conditioner is running, there could be a problem with the unit. Set your air conditioner thermostat to 78 degrees or higher in the summer and keep your furnace at 68 degrees or cooler in the winter. Each degree difference from these recommended settings will increase your energy costs from 3 to 5 percent. So if you set your air conditioner to 75 instead of 78 degrees, that small 3 degree difference in temperature could actually cost you 15 percent more in cooling expenses. Water heating is the next biggest expense in most homes, right after heating and cooling. The newer water heaters have better insulation, so it takes less energy to heat with water. We're here with Greg. Greg, tell us how we can save here. The first thing we want to do is check the temperature of the water heater. The water heater should be set to no more than 120 degrees. Not only does that save energy, it helps prevent scalds. We check the temperature of the water heater right here at the unit behind these doors. It takes a screwdriver. You want to make sure the power is off first. And all you do is adjust the dial inside till the pointer is pointing at 120 degrees. Then put the cover back on and you're finished. Another thing we can do here at the unit is to install a water heater blanket. Those are available at home improvement stores and it adds another layer of insulation to the water heater itself. This stops a lot of the loss of heat from the water inside the tank to the atmosphere outside. Next, we want to insulate the hot water pipes. Every hot water pipe that you see under your house or in the basement, any hot water pipe that you can get to, you want to insulate. You can also buy pipe insulation at home improvement stores. It's already preformed and pre-split, so it's very easy to install. But not only do we want to insulate every hot water pipe, we want to insulate about three to four feet of the cold water pipe that comes into the water heater. Because when the water heater is not running, heat will migrate back out of the cold side and you'll lose heat there as well. A couple other things you want to look for at the unit. If you ever see hot water or steam coming out of the temperature and pressure valve, you want to call a professional immediately because there's a big problem there. That means that the water heater is getting too hot and it could be a danger, a dangerous situation for your family. Also, if you notice a sudden decrease in hot water, or if you notice a, a sudden temperature spike in your water temperature, those are also signs of problems and you'll want to call a, a plumber or a professional to fix those as well. Greg, what are some other things that we can do to save money? Surprisingly though, most of the cost of heating water is not determined here at the unit but it's determined where it's used. So if you can cut down on the amount of hot water that comes out of the faucets and showers, you can save water heating dollars. One way to do that is to install low flow faucets and low flow shower heads anywhere in the house that you have a regular faucet or shower head. That saves energy, plus it also saves water. But one of the best tools you have to save water heating energy is right here by the habits that you use throughout the house and the way you use hot water. For example, don't pre-rinse the dishes with hot water before you put them in the dishwasher. Don't turn on the shower and let it run before you get in it. Don't let the water run down the sink when you're shaving. By changing your habits and thinking about the way you use hot water, you can really save a lot of water heating dollars. Leaks here can add up to higher bills and waste. A leak can be as easy to fix as getting a new washer for your faucet. Dripping faucets don't just waste water. Dripping hot water is a constant drain on your energy bill. A hot water faucet that drips once per second will waste 2,300 gallons of water a year, plus the electricity used to heat it.
A home's ability to control the movement of heat both into and out of the house is called the thermal envelope. Heat always moves toward colder air and the thermal envelope acts as an insulating barrier. An efficient thermal envelope prevents warm air from escaping in the winter and coming into your home in the summer. Let's further evaluate the home's thermal envelope. I'm here with Sunny and we're going to talk about attic insulation. Thank you. 80% of a home's heat gain and heat loss comes in through the attic. A minimum of R30 is required to, for your attic space to be efficient. There are different types of materials that are used to insulate the attic space and depending on what type of insulation is used, that is how you determine how many inches of insulation are required to gain that R30 value. Also important is floor insulation, which is usually consisted of fiberglass batting installed between the joists and the floorboards. Attic temperatures in the summertime can reach in excess of 200 degrees, so ventilation is also very important. You don't want that 200 degree air heating your conditioned space underneath. Walls are a different story. It is usually not cost efficient to go back in and add insulation into walls. You never get your cost back. If you have pull down stairs that lead into the living space of your home, chances are very good that unconditioned air is filtering into your home. An insulated hatch cover that installs inside the attic above the staircase can mean measurable savings in your energy bill. If you have an attic fan, you can take further measures to reduce heat transfer into the attic by placing a layer of insulation over a whole house fan when it's not in use. Doors and windows also have a strong impact on your home's thermal envelope. If you have an older home, chances are you have single pane windows. Single pane can be one sheet of glass or several smaller panes and they might not be energy efficient. You have several options. One thing you can do is install storm windows on the outside, making the existing window more energy efficient or you can replace them entirely with more energy efficient double pane windows, perhaps with a low E glass. Low emissivity glass has two panes with an inner gas in between, reducing the heat transfer from the outside in and the inside out. Now, the cost in doing that is such that these windows will pay for themselves. It will take a while, but down the road, it's going to make your home much more comfortable on the inside. It's going to reduce drafts, and if you ever decide to sell your house, high energy efficient windows are a big selling point. Check around the door to make sure that the seals are all okay. If there's light coming in, then so is air, and you'll need to put weather stripping in place. If the existing seal or weather stripping is damaged, then replace that. Also, check around your doors and windows for cracks and be sure to caulk them properly. There are plenty of other low-cost ways of improving your home's thermal envelope. Check walls by looking behind your light switch and electrical outlet covers. If you see gaps, you can install foam gaskets like this one behind the covers. Now here's something very simple that you can do to save energy and money on your electric bills. Change out the light bulbs. Now this lamp has a standard incandescent bulb in it. Replace the incandescent with a fluorescent. The manufacturer has made these bulbs so that they fit just about any fixture. And a couple of the good things about these bulbs is that they burn one-fourth the energy of an incandescent bulb. Plus, they last about 10 times longer than an incandescent bulb. Recessed lighting can be a big consumer of kilowatt hours. Oftentimes, there are many bulbs and they can be outfitted with high wattage bulbs. Something to look out for. You know, the way you use energy every day around the house will help you save money and save energy. Simple things like closing your exterior doors to keep the heat or cool in or out where it belongs. Try to do your laundry in cold water. All of these things are very simple and very inexpensive. Try to run the dryer and the dishwasher with full loads. 
Don't preheat your oven unless it's called for in the recipe. Other tips include use the air dry setting on your dishwasher, cover spas and hot tubs, and run the pool pump a minimum time to achieve desired results. Oh, by the way, if you're not using the lights, turn them off. The U.S. Department of Energy's Energy Guide label helps you to compare the estimated energy consumption and yearly operating costs for different brands and models. Also, the Department of Energy's Energy Star program identifies the most energy efficient products. Just look for the Energy Star label. Now, like many families, you may have an extra refrigerator or freezer in the basement or in the garage to store extra food or something as simple as storing ice in the freezer. Understand that if you have that extra appliance, it might cost you as much as $200 or more a year on your energy bill. So here's a couple of tips for you. In the case of a freezer like this one, which is down here in the basement, try to keep your freezer full of food or at least partially full of food so the freezer doesn't have to work as hard to maintain a constant temperature. If you don't keep food in there, at least keep several bags of ice in there and it's going to run more efficiently. With a refrigerator, same type of thing. Keep it full of food, or if it's not full of food, fill it full of bottles of water, and it too will run more efficiently. I hope this video has given you some valuable insight into tightening your home's thermal envelope and how a few good habits can truly add up to real savings on your energy bills. So remember, your EMC is your partner in helping you use energy more wisely. Now, if you have any questions about anything you've seen here, of course you can visit your EMC's nearest office or go to their website. Your EMC not only provides the energy for you, they help you use it more efficiently. And that, my friend, is going to save you some money in the long run.